Good evening, you're watching the news here on Mirada. I'm Fede Souza. Thank you for joining us. Now, fugitive Nirav Modi, who was accused in the 13,500 crore rupee Punjab National Bank scam, has been arrested in London's Holborn and produced in UK's Westminster Court. His bail plea has been rejected. He will stay in jail until the next hearing, which is scheduled to be the 29th of March. While Nirav Modi and his defence said that the charges against him are politically motivated, his prosecutor contended that if granted bail, Nirav Modi is a definite flight risk and would fail to surrender. My colleague Meenakshi Banja joins us right now with the latest updates. Uh, Meenakshi, obviously, this is currently politically also a very big story because we do have uh, the government taking uh, credit for it. But it is, given, given the previous uh, track records of being able to bring people to the book, to have him arrested uh, and to have his, have his bail rejected is an achievement for this government, isn't it? Well, indeed, Faye, uh, this will be seen as a shot in the arm for the Indian government and, uh, of course, the Indian agencies as well. Uh, and just, uh, it was just about nearly uh, two, uh, less than two weeks ago when we saw those visuals of Nirav Modi uh, walking around freely in the streets of London, uh, wearing that old uh, expensive uh, ostrich leather jacket, uh, which shocked the consciousness of a lot of people as to how uh, he is able to get away and lead this cushy lifestyle uh, in London without any worries. Uh, clearly, immediately immediate ramification is this, that at least uh, he will no longer be roaming freely, uh, unabashedly in the streets of London wearing expensive clothing because he's going to be very much in custody uh, till at least uh, uh, the 29th of March when the next hearing uh, is uh, all, uh, all uh, slated uh, to be taken up for consideration in the Westminster Court. So even that is a huge shot in the arm because uh, today it was only the Crown prosecution whose arguments, of course, aided by the Indian prosecutors, their evidences, their documents. Uh, that they have sent over uh, to the cr Crown prosecution in support of why they want a uh, crackdown on Nirav Modi. Uh, but the big uh, fact, uh, like you pointed out, is as to how the court there has found enough grounds uh, to entertain this argument of Crown prosecution that if granted bail, uh, there was this great propensity that Nirav Modi could again escape. That's huge, uh, which is weighing uh, against Nirav Modi already uh, before the start of the extradition hearing has, uh, has even begun. And the second uh, point uh, that the judge today has highlighted is this, uh, that uh, he is someone who is at flight risk. Uh, despite Nirav Modi wanting uh, to submit a huge amount of money as surety in pounds, uh, that was not something uh, that uh, has uh, found any resonance with the judge. Uh, clearly, the UK court, even the UK court, uh, is of the opinion that if granted bail, now that his uh, whereabouts have been spotted, uh, there is an imminent chance that Nirav Modi could again escape. So with with all these uh, facts and arguments, uh, the very fact that today he will be uh, in jail, and not just today, uh, but uh, uh, till the at least the 29th of March when the matter comes up next, uh, is a big shot in the arm for the Indian government ahead of Lok Sabha 2019. Because remember, so far the government has constantly encountered criticism. Even today, Priyanka Gandhi Wadra and uh, Gulam mm. Nabi Azad slamming the government, saying that what's the big deal? Why are you so showcasing it as an achievement when it was under your watch uh, that he escaped? escaped uh, uh, India. So that, uh, those action. arguments, because uh, we are all headed to Lok Sabha 2019. Yes, Faye, back to you. Right. Uh, so we're actually putting forward very clearly uh, the arguments that were placed before the court in, in, in the Westminster Court in London. Nirav Modi is going to have to spend uh, the next nine days in jail until his next hearing. And of course, uh, for the government of India, this is a massive achievement. Meenakshi, many thanks for joining us uh, and bringing us that update on the show with me right now. Uh, Said Zafar Islam for the BJP, Sanjay Hegde, senior advocate with the Supreme Court, and Ramakant Gaur is also a senior lawyer. Uh, we'll have Kalash uh, Vasudev join us as well. The question to be asked is this, what happens now? Does this arrest mean that we have Nirav Modi and he will be sent back to India soon? Sanjay Hegde, my first question to you. The legal process, obviously, of extradition begins now. And if Vijay Malia has taught us anything, is that it's going to take time. Do you believe that this arrest is an indication that India has, in fact, been tough with Nirav Modi? No, they, uh, this is nothing to do with India. This is just a call by the UK magistrate on whether Nirav Modi is a flight risk or not. Okay. India actually slept on the file and it was not till, uh, and despite uh, uh, 
letters from the UK Foreign Office did not respond in time. It was only after the Telegraph reporters stalked Nirav Modi and tapped him on the shoulder mm. that uh, all this paperwork has begun. Be that as it may, the process has begun. Nirav Modi is facing extradition, but there is no short-circuiting the process, which is extremely long, extremely cumbersome. And so far, it's only in the Vijay Malya case that we've actually succeeded in getting past some stages of the uh, extradition process. You must remember that even Malya is not yet on a, uh, on a flight to India. Uh, we, we can presume that whenever Malia comes, that after a few months or so, Modi may come. But let us get both of them. And in the meanwhile, don't take anything for granted. I have seen the most rock solid of cases crumble simply because the right papers were not produced in the court at the right point of time. The prosecution uh, uh, lawyers now have greater uh, experience of the process, especially when assisted by Indian lawyers. And uh, uh, after, I, after uh, the Vijay Malya episode, I, I hope that there are, uh, they've learned quite a few things and that there are lesser mistakes in, the, in, the, in handling Nirav Modi. Well, uh, Zafar Islam, obviously uh, the government and the BJP is going to see this as a massive win before the upcoming elections. Uh, how are you, what is the message going out from BJP headquarters on this arrest right now? Let me ask you, let me ask you this question. Okay. Don't you think that is an achievement? Because it's indeed an achievement. And the people of India will acknowledge whether, whether the opposition parties acknowledge or not, whether they want to make any adverse comment, it doesn't matter because the people of India will acknowledge that it's a big achievement and whatever criticism they were making earlier, they will have to, it will haunt them purely because the Honorable Prime Minister, the Chalky of this country has made it very clear that wherever they are, they will not live in peace. They will be hunted, mm. hunted by Indian authorities, by the Indian government. And today it's a big victory for the Honorable Prime Minister because the policy which he had adopted, foreign policy, the kind of a, the, the relationship he was able to develop during his time has been, has, has, had come very handy in, in, uh, in achieving this. Let me tell you, every single channel I have watched mm -hmm. in the country, everybody was saying that he will be uh, taken, he will not be taken to custody, he will be immediately discharged and uh, he will not be arrested. But today, the way he has been denied, that only suggests that the way the, uh, the Indian authorities and Indian lawyers have pursued this case with all the information and the evidences they have been able to <coughs> gather, that this uh, 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 thief will not uh, will okay. be able to escort, uh, get uh, uh, any, any reprieve from uh, the authorities. Okay. But let me tell you, the, the earlier, some, some, some of the opposition parties are making a statement that we were not pursuing only up after the channel had uh, uh, spotted them, some telegraph uh, reporter has spotted them and then we, we came to know. It is absolutely uh, incorrect, but they are clueless. I understand they need to be clueless because these were pursued very confidentially, uh, confidentially uh, with the authorities and this all confidentiality had to be maintained. That's why nobody knows. But let okay. me tell you that these, uh, the authorities were in touch with each other, the information what uh, the uh, UK authorities, Home, of, uh, Home Ministry needed from Indian uh, authorities through the our High Commission, yeah. they were regularly in touch and they needed all the info and evidences. Today they have uh, evidence and it's a testimony that the bail has been denied and it's a big achievement of the Government of India okay. and the Honourable Prime Minister and his foreign policy which he has pursued in the last five years. All right, Ramakant Gore has uh, a rebuttal. Mr. Gore, go ahead. It's, it's a, uh, undoubtedly the credit goes to media. He says this is an achievement. Yes, this is an achievement of the media, which resulted into this proceeding. <laughs> the agencies were sleeping in registering the FIR way back last year. So much so, the anchor of this show went uh, abroad to find out been, uh, the locations of Nira Modi. Back. Just a minute. I, I, I know. I know the facts and I know the facts better than you. I'll, I'll quote the companies 
I'll quote the companies through which oh, okay. it was camouflaged. Your financial intelligence unit was sleeping. Your enforcement director was absolutely sleeping. Clueless, sir. CBI was not do taking any off, action. Please do not, Unless, do not, just a minute. Do not gentlemen. make this statement. Do, you know you better than the, the authorities. Courtesy to listen to this. No, no, no. Don't make this statement. No, actually, I have the courtesy, but your one statement second, was second, incorrect. Gentlemen, and gentlemen, I want to no, correct no, you. Do not yell at each other. Nobody knows. No, no, only one, the authorities know. Only the government knows. Mr. Islam, Mr. Islam. Don't claim that you know everything. Mr. Islam, Mr. Islam, do not do not yell at each other. It's no, not no, that kind that, of show. How can Mr. he make Islam, a statement that he knows better than because me? Because as a citizen, you, can no, you know second. better than the authorities? Mr. Mr. Islam, with all due respect, you are a representative of the BJP. You are not an authority. You are not you are not speaking right now on behalf of the ED, the CBI, or the income tax department. One second, one second. Let me ask the All question I'm saying, again. I'm, I can't see who is speaking, but I'm not in front of the television All right. set. The but person All I'm who saying, is speaking? my submission is that I, uh, whatever I know and whatever I know, I cannot divulge all the details. Okay, I have fair enough. If you cannot divulge all of the details, the that's fair enough. All I but I would ask this, you to please not, you're, you're welcome to disagree with the panelists, but not to yell. Uh, I just want to ask you this question. It is now obvious that there were various red no, flags there were various red flags in the need of Modi scam while it was taking place. Over the course of two years, the income tax department had audited and written to the ED and the CBI and nobody took up the case. Everybody turned a blind eye. It is impossible that 13,500 crore rupees found their way outside of this country with only the connivance of a small bank manager in a certain branch of a certain bank. Where are Where is the investigation into the rest of the people who colluded with Nirav Modi to allow him to escape, the people who colluded to allow him to get out of the country before they filed the FIR. Remember that he wrapped up his children's schooling, he moved them out of the school's midterm, he then packed his entire family and moved them overseas. And it's only after that that the FIR was registered. So it is fair then to ask questions of why the ED, the Income Tax Department, the CBI, did not notice and did not stop the RBI did not notice this massive bank fraud until after the man was outside the country. Are there any answers for that? If you're telling us that the authorities knew everything, then how did it get so bad, Mr. Islam? You're... See, I, I, all I can say mm -hmm. that this man had done a lot of regular uh, uh, trade with uh, dealings with, with with the support of the some some bankers, which everyone knows. Nobody knew that uh, that he had fled the country. But once he fled, when with the authorities came to know that he has fled, then only the all the options which was available with the government with the authorities, those those have been pressed into action, and is as a result. Today he is behind the bar in UK and today everyone knows that he will have to stay put in, in London and he will be extradited so, very soon. Unlike Vijay Malia's case, which we did take so much time and eventually it's a matter of time when he will be, uh, he will have to come back to India and face the law of the land. Likewise, it will not take much time in case of Nero Modi, it will, everything will be accelerated purely because everyone knows about this case, the case is different and it's, and, and the 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 kind of corruption he has done and uh, and uh, all the evidences which the authorities have have been have been placed in front of the uh, authorities okay, so, in the so so let me let me get rebuttals yes, in bf kailash vasudev so you are admitting you corruption and, and occurred in in your government one second bf kailash vasudev who joins us as well mr vasudev good evening and thank you for joining us here's the question no, sir, the government all I'm obviously that the corruption treating this started, one second mr Islam. happened in our, uh, in our time this was well, the entire thing was I will grant you this, that corruption knows no political party and it actually is a disease across various political parties. Mr. Zaf, uh, Mr. Kalash Vasudev, here's the question. The government is treating this like a massive achievement, and it perhaps is. Do you see this as an achievement, the arrest and the denial of bail? Or do you think that this is routine and just a decision of the magistrate in London? Good evening. Happy Holy to all of you. Uh, you see, the fact is that the extradition process in, U in the United Kingdom is very different. This is a momentary arrest. He will be in custody. He will be enlarged on bail to the extradition proceeding start. Uh, much has been said about extradition of people or fugitives or economic offenders from India. But look at the figures given by the government of India itself. Between 2002 and 2018, 
Between 62 and 70 people have been extradited on economic offenses or charges of murder, criminal charges and the like. Out of them, I mean, about 30 of them have come in from the Middle East. So 62 have been coming, a total figure is 62 or 70, 30 from the Middle East. The rest are divided in different countries. Only one has come back from UK. The gentleman was wanted on a charge of murder. Extradition is not an easy process because our people don't take immediate action to prevent people from fleeing. Choksi, he's taken his citizenship, he surrendered your passport. Where are you going to get him back from? He escaped at the same time. Lalit Modi is wanted. Dawood Ibrahim has been a long case. I'm just reading out some names. Nadim Saifi. Sanjay Bhandari is an arms dealer in London. Jatin Mehta is in St. Kitts. Ravi Shankaran in the naval case is in London. So most of the people who have run away from here have been able to take refuge in the United Kingdom without being able to get them back. Canada sends them back. USA sends them back. The Middle East, of course, is a different kettle. From England, it's not going to be so easy to get Mr. Nirav Modi back. The question is, why did he let him go? Mm. Why didn't we take action? Why didn't we initiate steps when everything was in the boiling pot? Everything was available to government. Look at the flip side of it. Today, in economic cases, one of the largest and the most difficult cases pending before the government of India and the tribunals is the ILNFS case. 110,000 crores, 90,000 crores. You know, these kind of figures are staggering and shocking. We are not able to control the economic positions. The government of India today says that in the past three years, they brought back 11 people. Very nice, they brought them back, but that's your duty. Mm. If you're going to bring back 11 out of so many hundreds, so many big scamsters for the past so many years, we are not able to run a system where we can stop economic offenses. If you don't stop economic offenses, the fugitives will run away. You have enacted an act. How many people have you brought back under the new act? You know, these kind of questions disturb the citizen because the citizen says, I'm paying my taxes, I'm doing my job, but the people who are really fiddling with the system are running away from here and you're not able to get them back. How are you going to get these people back from England? You've been fighting for Malia for three years. He's got his positions there. He says, I want to pay back. And the court says, maybe we will consider it. You know, there are all sorts of pros and cons which, which trouble one. Neither Modi is not going to come back so fast, if that's your question, my specific answer. He's going to take some time. Extradition mm. process will go on. Magistrates in England have arrested him. They have the power. They have the power to release him on bail. 29th is the next date. Let's see what happens. Absolutely. Mr. Sanjay Agri, do you, do you have a rebuttal to offer Zafar Islam on his argument that uh, the government and the authorities didn't know when he left the country and it was after he left the country that they sort of pressed into action to do what was necessary? I agree with Mr. Islam. You see, his government is so totally clueless that this man was actually able to take a photograph in Davos <laughs> with the Prime Minister and all the captains of industry and he was portrayed as one of the great captains of industry to the outside world. And thereafter, he left your country. Don't tell me that all your financial units and everybody, and none of them knew what exactly the position with this man was. He, 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 say, he sent his children away much earlier. Or, uh, they, they, they did not attend um, the expensive school in Bombay at the beginning of the term. That itself should have set alarm bells on. You let him off. You let his uncle off. His, and his uncle has been called fondly Meul Bai by the Prime Minister. <clears throat> well, we are, we are, the people of India are not fools. The people are watching. And in, in this particular case, but for the telegraph stopping him on Oxford Street, <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe the man would have had uh, a few more uh, uh, months or years of, of just continuing his business in London with some, uh, some uh, uh, letters being written for the sake of the record. If you are serious <laughs> about catching those people who have fled, please have dedicated units to each case. <clears throat> Right now, all I can see is Ache Din for uh, <coughs> the prosecution lawyers as well as Nirav Modi's lawyers. All these extraditions will continue. There is no particular hope of getting him back in a hurry. The, all, all your diplomatic effort and all your political effort does not matter in a UK court. The UK court will go strictly by the letter of the law 
the UK court will go by the time the, uh, that the right. uh, on a timeline based on when the matter is uh, initiated. There, 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 there are uh, many stages of judicial review, and we are at the beginning of the game. I only hope that with all our experience in the Malia uh, extradition, we we have learned something and we keep our paperwork intact for this one as well. I want him back. The country wants him back. And the country will not tolerate anything less than a serious effort to get him back. All this for the cos uh, like event management and cosmetics for the uh, for the sake of the evening debate. That's all fine, uh, just <coughs> fun and games. We will know that he is back when he is actually back. Uh, Mr. Ramakan Gaur, go ahead, please. The case of Vijay Malaya and Nirav Modi are altogether different. They are uh, comprising of uh, different facts. <coughs> Vijay Malaya is an industrialist. He owned airlines. He represented himself before the Indian courts. Whatsoever manner, he, his lawyers were appearing and he, he was always saying that I have an intent to return the money. So he was an industrialist. He, it was a case of industrialists. Being, a, uh, uh, being running a, an NPA yes, or Mr. Gore, specifically playing about Nero fraud Modi. with the banks to a limited extent. As far as Nero Modi is concerned, he is a fraudster. He is a criminal who prepared, forged, forged, fabricated the documents to avail the loan. He connived with the bank officials. He connived with various other influential people. His uncle Mehul Choksi uh, uh, created 19 company and Mr. Islam, this list is available on ROC website. Please look at that. I am citing anything and everything with records. In these 19 companies, majority of the directors are residing in Charles. And these companies were also used as instrument yes. to take the Indian money out of uh, this land. So this data is available to you also over the internet. Please look at the data. The country is not, uh, I may, I may, that, that may not be taken by the sentiment which is floated now. Journalists played better investigative roles than your investigating agencies and nothing political against any party. Well, we have to leave this here because we have run out of time. But in conclusion, while I thank my panelists, while Nirav Modi will spend the night in jail in London and perhaps the next nine nights in jail in London until his next hearing, he has been denied bail by the magistrate uh, in Westminster, in the Westminster Court. That shouldn't in any way allow us to take our eye off the investigation in India. Nirav Modi couldn't have duped us or defrauded us as a country of 13,500 crore rupees over the course of a couple of years unless he was in collusion with people in high places within the Punjab National Bank where only a middle management level individual has been charged what about everybody else the RBI who looked the other way and is supposed to regulate this bank the register of companies that had various shell companies listed in his and his uncle's name. The CBI, the Enforcement Directorate and the Income Tax Department who all looked the other way until Nirav Modi was out of the country. That investigation should continue because if it's not, then we will have more Nirav Modi's. So one arrest and a denial of Braille is positive news but it is a small step in a very, very long journey of extradition. Stay with me right now.